today we're having our first ever grass-fed homestead meetup right here. We are hosting a meetup here today on the grass-fed homestead. This is a makeup meetup for the for the Justin Rhodes event that we had back in August. Originally we planned on hosting Justin Rhodes meetup here on the grass-fed homestead. We were going to make it a big shindig, but the interest, the amount of people that were coming quickly outgrew our capacity to host that many people. So we had to move it to a local public park. There were a lot of people, there were a lot of people who were very disappointed because they wanted to come see our homestead. So we are doing a make update for that today. Given the time of year, there were a lot of people who couldn't make it. Everyone's getting ready for harvest. They're getting ready for winter. Winter seems to be coming a little bit quicker this year than usual in North Idaho. So a lot of people are scrambling to get ready for that. So there aren't nearly as many people coming to this event that wanted to. It's kind of good that our first meetup is on the smaller side anyway. It takes the pressure off us a little bit. Ashley's not even here. She's gonna be home within the next hour or so, but she was on a business trip, so uh, I've been getting ready for everything here by myself. And you probably also hear an impact driver going off behind me in the background. Well, we are having our carport closed in and the gentleman we hired last year to build the carport is back he's putting up the, the lumber he got from the local mill of which is big savings way cheaper than retail Guests should be just arriving right about now. Hey Steve, how's it going? Good, <laughs> Good to see you. Good to Thanks for coming. Yeah. So we have a nice little gathering here today. Not everyone showed up, I guess, because we had some rain earlier that may have scared some people off, but we have a really nice turnout here, and we are to spend a little time before we take a little tour of the property, getting to know each other. So right here behind me is Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. <laughs> so, so do you have any homesteading uh, goals or? It. Yeah, I've got about 10 acres, about nine of it's in tree farm right at the moment. I'm hoping to start with some chickens after the first year and uh, get my garden going. Are you going to do a tick show? Yeah. Right over here is Richard and if any of you guys remember seeing our video about Red the Dexter Cow, Richard did an awesome thing and got Red. We were pretty heartbroken that we weren't able to get her but we're really happy that she is going to another really great home because she's a really cool cow. So. Uh, Richard, what else are you doing on your homestead? Well, we're going to be starting a Dexter breeding service uh, next year. That's going to come in handy for us. And we're also uh, growing orchards, starting our orchard business. And that's up in North Idaho here. So, so Kevin, <laughs> good to see you guys again. And you guys are just starting your homestead, is that right? Yeah, we just got 10 acres, putting a house up there in spring and then starting the farm. We want to do, you know, homesteading, but we also want to sell some stuff, some market garden stuff, right get some... Uh, critters up there, turkeys and pigs and chickens and a lot of earthworks to do, ponds and swells maybe, key light flower. So you've heard of permaculture then? I've done permaculture, yes. <laughs> Jeff awesome. Lawton, certified from Jeff Lawton. Awesome. Online. Chance? What kind of animals do you want to get? A pig? What kind of pig? A black pig. A black one that makes really good bacon? Awesome. <laughs> Rob and Rosie. Rob and Rosie are my pig acquiring friends. Rob and Rosie got some of our piglets. How are they doing? Doing good. Doing good, getting big. Are they getting, they're growing rapidly? Yeah. Awesome, so you guys have pigs obviously. Mm -hmm. And what else are you doing on your homestead? Chickens for now. Chickens? Chickens. And you guys are, you guys are off grid, right? Because I just hopefully uh, get some uh, garden and uh, probably try to get a YouTube channel going within the, next, the end of the year here, so. This is where I'll insert the little thing that pops up that links to your channel. We'll have to visit you to get some lambies. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Maureen and Craig, we're the Post Falls area. Um, started out with Nigerian dwarf goats and uh, have chickens. We're starting out also with Icelandic chickens because they're supposed to be very winter hardy. They are, yes. Predator savvy. Um, looking into Idaho pasture pigs next and sheep after that. Awesome. So are you guys milking your goats? Oh yeah. Very cool. And here is Tom Wiley. Tom, you are also homesteading, is that correct? Mm -hmm. What's We're going on in your Just head? starting to. So we have five acres just a ways south of here. And we were starting from scratch. We got our well, actually, our pump in the well yesterday. Awesome. So we have water now. Congratulations. And, and which is really yes. exciting. <laughs> that felt really good. And you guys are documenting your experience, aren't you? Yeah. How are you doing that? We're, we have a YouTube channel, which is Tom Wiley with no space between. Um, and it's wileyhomestead.com is the website. Are you doing kind of like a vlog style? Yes, we're doing vlog style. I, I do, we're leaning um, especially toward um, kind of the handyman aspect of homesteading and how homesteading involves doing stuff yourself. Often, you know, with the equipment you have on hand, the tools you have on hand. Homestead and, minimalism, right? Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> we and practice that here. Homes. So I'm that's the background I come from is doing building stuff and, and fixing things. And so um, so I do a lot of um, kind of how to fix it stuff on the channel too. Cool. So Tom Wiley YouTube channel, we'll leave a link for that as well so people can find you easy. Awesome. <laughs> and what is your name and what are you doing for homesteading? Yeah. Um, what am I doing for homesteading? American guinea hogs. They are approaching market, what we call market weight. So that's not full size. Full size would be like your breeding stock size. Market weight is when they get to their peak weight for harvest. Anything after market weight, the weight they put on is much slower and less efficient if you're trying to make a sale. So that's why market weight right. is a certain way. So with American guinea hogs, that's in the 100, 120 pound range. With a typical like Berkshire, um, Tamworth, uh, IPP, the Idaho pasture pig, whatever it might be, you're looking for around 220 pounds market weight. So completely turn over the soil, so you'll get perfect disturbance. And you know, pay, people pay good money renting or buying tillers to do this, right? And so we have pigs that do it, and we get pork in the end. So it's, it's a wonderful situation. They love it. They, I mean, to, when we move them into the next one, I mean, they just, you could just sense the happiness the pigs get right to digging. They love it. So um, we decided to go with the American guinea hog for a couple different reasons. One, they're small, mm -hmm. like we were talking about. They're manageable, especially for a new pig owners like us. Um, I can get in there and they're not going to knock me over. I'm not going to have any kind of conflict right. with management like that. Also, they're, they're known for being a very docile breed. Okay. With a Berkshire, maybe even six months, you know, so okay. you, you get there much more quickly. Now, they eat a lot more feed than the American guinea hog, but you finish so much sooner that it, it, that less, whole feed equation feed. can work. I, I haven't done the math, right. but it, theoretically it could be a wash okay. in that mm -hmm. sense. But what you are doing is you're, you're getting a lot more time and you're not overwintering. Mm -hmm. so, and if you're selling from market, the time is very important. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the disadvantage. So you, what was your question again? Oh, sorry, I was piglets. wondering when, if you got them the spring. Piglets, that, right, that, right. that was basically, yeah, if right. you get them. Right, so we have piglets, and we'll get down there okay. in a second. We'll go there next. The piglets are, I think, was, they were born right at the end of May, early June, okay. so four months-ish. And you can, so you can see how small they are mm. at that age still. Okay. Keep in mind what I just said, six to seven months yeah. on most pigs for a hard and they're just a few months behind that, and they're very much bigger still. Okay. So you can say, so little guys. you can see that very slow growth. So these, so we're are, gonna, so these you feed over winter, it's not a, you buy them in the spring, the piglets, and then... Okay, so you fall. you can, right? Okay. We, we get trapped in a mentality sometimes where we're stuck to these numbers that I was saying. Yeah. You can slow at any point. As long as it's cold outside. But, and, okay. Are you, you want the flies. getting you, you know the efficiency you want out of yeah. it? Yeah. So like the, the the piglets, I could start right now harvesting them at this size, 
and have you have what's called a suckling pig. Technically, a suckling pig is still nursing. These are not, but these are the same size as suckling pig because they're so much smaller. And you just process them the same way. You leave the skin on, and you do a scald and scrape method. So you're, you're, you head on everything, you just, you're eviscerating. And uh, the next day, you uh, scour the outside skin, salt, a little pepper, sage, toss it in the oven like a turkey. Out comes wow. the most crispy crackling you've ever eaten in your life. And it's a really, really nice thing. So don't <laughs> don't fixate on the time. I mean, you could do it at any point. What are some things that you've learned processing a couple pigs? What did you learn that you weren't expecting you'd encounter? I was not expecting to get shot in the face ah. with pig urine ah. <laughs> um, from a dead pig that was hanging. When, when you use the stand, it's a bell-shaped scraper, a hog scraper. It's got a handle on it. Uh, if you remind me later, I'll get one out. Um, and it, it's metal um, bell shape at the end. And you it's use like a medieval torture edge tool. Of it at a downward oh. angle to, to slough the skin and the, the um, the outer epidermis layer, the epithelial tissue, right, um, off the pig. So these pigs look black. They will be like a whitish pink pig after we scrape them. Once that happens, but when you're scraping the belly area, you put pressure on that bladder right there. Well, the male anatomy of the pig, you can see in the piglets, the, the area where the urine would come out is like right here on us. It's very high up, so it's right in your face when you're... And I, I got a little little blast of that. That was well. You're in a sterile, right? Interesting. Yeah. It has healing properties. It, it does, um, but it also smells badly. Oh, oh really? By a face you kept your mouth closed, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unusual Clara behavior. Was just a few weeks old, and she was Pardon me. obviously becoming the runt in the litter. She wasn't doing well, and then the mamas weren't letting her nurse and the other piglets were forcing her off the teeth kind of deal. So she wasn't getting enough, but she was hanging in there. She was still trying, she was still fighting for it. And then it was probably another week or two after that, she started getting diarrhea. And She's like, dehydrated. Oh boy, that's not good. And so, um, so, you know, we had to make the decision. Um, if we l just don't interfere, she will die. And effectively, in or what do you call it, passively culling her, right? Mm -hmm. That way, which is the responsible thing if you're breeding and, and raising stock, you know, it's a weaker genetic that you don't want to continue, right? But um, the other decision is, you know, we could feed her and, and save her, and, and that just seemed, felt like the right thing to do. So we um, started buying goat's milk from the grocery. We started off actually with a, um, a milk replacer. We did that for about a week before we found out that goat milk was a really good replacer mm. for it. And so we switched to the goat milk and she just blew up. Mm. Um, and it was really cool because the pigs were all in here at the time and we would just call for her, Clara, it's time for milk. And she, you hear her like, <laughs> and then she squeeze out the fence and come running up. We'd feed her over by where the, the carport is. And she was literally, I could hold her in my palm. I mean, she was so tiny wow. and that, that was, July. Yeah, it was July, the week of July 4th. Oh. So she has gotten really big she's and she's in very fact, assertive about what she wants. She's a couple of her siblings over there. Um, so. Some big cheeks. She figured that ordeal led to why like, she's more um, accommodating with the W. Yeah, because yeah, I used to carry her with me all the time. I carried her around. Um, I held her in my arm. I did evening chores and all the time I had her with me. Just um, we bonded. Um, now she's she's gotten kind of grumpy, you know. She, she doesn't need me anymore. <laughs> so it's like the teenager, right? Like you give them 15 years of care, and then you know they they get hormonal and grumpy. And, and oh my gosh, yeah. are your feelings hurt? <laughs> Just a little. Sound no. sensitive, darling. So anyone want to pet Clara? She's very nice. <laughs> What are you talking about? I didn't quite understand. You want what? Food? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't understand you the first time. <laughs>
Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>